A very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on the simulation of communication systems. And uh, we were talking about uh, plotting histograms for uh, continuous valued random variables and we had looked at a sample program to plot a histogram. Obviously, there is the inbuilt MATLAB histogram, but uh, at this point I would like to make a point about uh, the computational complexity or uh, the amount of time it takes. I would like to make a point about the amount of time it takes to execute a program or the algorithm efficiency. So, we had seen that what we were doing earlier was that divide the sample interval into bins and then check each element for the corresponding bin and increment that count by 1. So, this is one approach, but uh, since this is uh, element wise comparison. So, let me say that we will talk about the computational complexity. I will talk about the computational complexity of this algorithm here. So, basically if we talk about the computational complexity of this algorithm, then this is the algorithm or this is the part where the histogram or we construct the histogram. So, basically we check each sample against bin. So, n samples are compared against L bin boundaries twice and samples are compared against L bin boundaries twice. So, you require an order of NL floating point operation, you require an order of NL floating point operations. Now, let me try to repeat this algorithm in a slightly more efficient way. So, what I will do here is I will open my example from yesterday and save it as a new file, call it histogram example 4. And what I will do is instead of comparing against each bin, I will say that, so instead what we will do is instead since x the lth bin, if that x lies between plus L minus 1 delta and x min plus L delta. So, n x will lie in the lth bin if this is true or I can say that minus x min. So, this is I can make it a semi open interval x minus x min divided by delta gives me a number between minus 1 and L or if I tweak this slightly I can say that ceiling of I mean by delta. So, since uh, I change this semi open interval into a semi closed interval that should not hurt much except the last case which we will deal with or rather floor of this plus 1 equals L or if floor of this plus 1 equals L then obviously floor operation floor of x equals the greatest in
less than or equal to x. So, floor of x plus 1 equals L then this is true. So, that said let us try to implement this. So, I will remove this inner loop say L equals floor of x minus x min minus x min divided by delta plus 1. This is L and equals this and correspondingly Increment the count and I get this. And so, the extreme case this has to be there. So, this is a contingency that we need to put and run. So, this this is the plot as expected. So, instead if we replace this operation with seal then the problem of minimum of this will be solved because I do not need a plus 1 here as well. Still need to do that or if I add an EPS here this problem will be solved. This problem will be solved because now ceiling will update that EPS into this and we plot the histogram. So, this is it, but uh, I can actually get rid of this step as well and I can automate this or I can use the inbuilt. this and this this run. So, this tick talk. So, we have seen two approaches for preparing the histogram in MATLAB. One is by comparison and one is using this uh, uh, ceiling operation. So, let us first look at the computational complexity of this approach and then so basically this. So, this uh, this is another way of doing it. So, basically are n floating point operations and after that n floating point operations. So, this is order of n floating point operations. So, let us so let us look at uh, tick and talk. So, let us look at the MATLAB help for tick and talk and see what it tells us. So, you can use tick and talk. So, you use tick to start the timer and you use talk to measure the time since the tick was initiated. So, this gives you the time that a particular operation takes. So, tick is a start of a top stopwatch timer and talk is the stop of a stopwatch timer. So, say here what I do is I put a tick before the start of this for loop or rather I should put a tick here, put a tick here and a talk at the end of this operation and uh, it will tell me the time. So, this and so the time that it took to extract all these bin centers was uh, 
0.3938 seconds. So, let us do one little exercise, let us tabulate these. So, let us uh, algorithm 1 and algorithm 2, I will insert a table. So, number of columns, number of rows 5, number of columns 3. So, basically this is n. So, n I will start from 100, 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh and 1 million. and time algorithm 1 and time algorithm 2. I will just uh, put these times here to give perspective. So, and similarly I will fix n and draw it for L. So, n is 10,000. So, actually I will add a 0 everywhere. So, 10,000 is 0 0.003938. So, this and I will add a 0 here, run 0 0.9764. So, numbers are still too small, but uh, let us add in a 0 here and see what happens, 0, 0.66. Six. So, now this has increased close to n4, 0.66. I will increase by another tail fold and see what happens, 0.23. So, not a ten fold increase, but a four fold increase. and algorithm 1 if I invoke, but uh, you might see that the Gaussian curve has become almost uh, completely smooth, which is a good thing. So, I will execute 3 and 10,000. So, I will put a tick and talk here. So, tick here and a talk at the end of this loop. I run this 0 0.06. So, this takes 0 0.06 seconds, more than 2 order of magnitude greater than this. I will add another 0 and run this 2, 5. add another 0. This should take more than a second now, 1.5 seconds and this time it should take uh, up to 10 seconds. So, let us run this. I will add another 0 and this time it will take some time, maybe up to 10 seconds to run. Let us see. it is still running. So, we will use a smaller number of, so this took 13 seconds, so which was 10 times, almost 10 times the previous run. So, we have now stabilized in n. So, similarly, let us fix 10, let us fix n and try to look at, so the time taken by two algorithms. say n equals 100,000. So, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and, 10, and uh, n I will fix at 100,000 or n I will fix at 1 million. So, let us do that. 
let us look at this example only this so l equals 10 save and run so 0 0.3 seconds clear the stable so 0 0.3 seconds and 100 1.5 seconds which matches with our previous observation I'll make uh, L equals 1000 which results in this should take about 10 seconds if it takes more than 10 seconds then I won't do the last experiment because that will take too much time so it it takes about 12 seconds so the final run would take about 2 minutes so we we will let it uh, run and uh, do something else while it runs. So, I will make this 10,000, run this and meanwhile inspect change the other program. So, I will reduce this to 1 million and reduce this to 10 waiting for the result and so I will just uh, beautify these tables while this goes on. So, I will say put a fixed parameter insert a text box and make it say this is for L equals 100. So, this is L fixed at 100 for different values of N and this is for N fixed at 1 million for different values of L. So, I will also write N samples and L bins. I will also write N samples and L bins and now let us open MATLAB. It is still running, but uh, it should be done soon. So, we will wait. Yes. So, we have a result. It took 118.12 seconds which was about 10 times the previous result. So, we have uh, found a linearity or kind of linear in both the number of samples and the number of bins. Now, let us look at the second algorithm. So, let us do this for L equals 10, N equals 1 million and L equals 10, 1 million, no this is 100,000. So, this is 1 million and L equals 10 and run. So, 0 0.0677 and if I run this equals 100, again I get uh, 0 0.67. 0 0.067. So, this, this, if I run this a third time, 0 0.065, I will enter this, 5 and a 1000, run this again and this again and 0 0.064 that uh, EPS this actually is uh, getting more and more efficient at the second decimal place. So, we had uh, earlier from our little analysis concluded that algorithm 1 for plotting histograms is linear in both number of samples and 
number of bins order of nl so the computational complexity of the first approach increases both with the number of samples and the number of bins but the computational complexity of the second approach only depends on the number of samples so in the first table it increases and in the second table remains constant And uh, this is how a good algorithm can uh, help you. Obviously, we will also use the inbuilt MATLAB hist command or uh, for the rest of this course, we will uh, use the inbuilt MATLAB hist command that will uh, plot a histogram or uh, give the bin centers as well as frequencies for a given histogram for any number of bins, so which has been optimized. So, we will naturally use that. So, actually let me try that and uh, see how does it scale with so this and so delete and do not need any of this as well but uh, for consistency this so 0 0.09 seconds which is slightly larger than the time taken by our second approach. So, I will see how this varies with the number of sample. So, this is constant, it is more or less constant in the number of uh, bins, but uh, say 1000. 5, 8, 8. So, this is actually sublinear. So, the inbuilt MATLAB algorithm is actually sublinear in the number of, uh, or it is also linear in the number of uh, uh, in the time that is required, but uh, for the rest of this course we will use uh, this algorithm. So, we have done a detailed comparison. So, with this we conclude our discussions of histograms in MATLAB, we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.